Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to be adding to our application role-based access control authorization. In other words, we are going to allow different users to have different roles and access different features of the application. For example, an admin user is going to have access to a very powerful admin level feature that allows him to log in on behalf of another user. A normal user will simply have access to the lessons data. The first thing that we want to do is we want to associate to a given user a list of roles. And that's what we are doing here at the level of the database. Let's see, for example, here the two users that we have here previously configured. As we can see, these users have a different set of roles. Let's start with the case of a normal user, student at gmail.com, that has the role student. This user can access the lesson screen, but this user should not access here the admin screen. Not only it should not be able to see it here at the level of the top menu, but it should not access it by typing it into the URL and it should not be able to do this login as user request to the backend and impersonate any other user. At different moments in the course, we are going to be logging in with this user. So the email for logging in is student at gmail.com, which is pre-filled in here in this screen, for example, and the password is going to be password 10 with a capital P. That's also pre-filled in here at the level of the login screen. Now, there is a second user that is pre-configured here in our in-memory database. This is going to be the admin at gmail.com user. And if we have a look here at the roles of this user, we can see that not only this user can access here the lessons data, but it also has the admin role. So this user should be able to see this screen and it should be able to log in impersonating other users. Now that we are familiar with these two users, let's talk a bit about architecture. Let's see how we are going to integrate our airbac authorization solution into the JSON Web Tokens based authentication solution that we also have here running in this sample application. This data that associates a user to a given list of roles only needs to exist in the server that is creating the new JSON Web Tokens. So only the authentication server, which is issuing new tokens, needs to have access to this data. There is no need for the application to have in its database a list of roles associating them to a given user. This is security related data, so it's best to keep this data together with the passwords in the centralized authentication and authorization server. So how will the application know which roles does a user have? That link between the user and a list of roles is a security claim. So the best way to put that information is in the JSON Web Token payload. And that's what we will be doing in our implementation. Let's have a look here at the login route. The login route is issuing a new JSON Web Token. Let's have a look at its implementation. This is similar to what we have implemented before. We are taking the user and password and we are building here a response. In that response, we are going to be creating a session token. That session token, for the moment, if we go over to this function create session token, which is in the security.utils file, we are going to see that we are signing a JSON web token using the RS-256 algorithm and we are providing here the subject but we are not providing here extra properties in the payload of this JSON Web Token. We are about to do so now. We are going to pass in here an extra property called roles. And inside this roles property, we are going to be passing in an array containing the user roles, which are available here at the level of this database. So in order to add the roles to the JSON Web Token, we are simply going to add here user.roles. Let's see this in action with our two predefined users. So we are going to refresh the application and let's, for example, log in using the student at gmail.com email. So we are going to type it in here on the login box and then we are going to log in and extract the JSON Web Token. Let's hit login. We are going to go over here to our application and here at the level of the session ID, 
we are going to take the value of the JSON Web Token and we are going to copy paste it here to JWT.io. If we do so, we are going to see that here at the level of the payload, we indeed have here a property which is an array of roles and this user has the role student. This means that all the security information about the user, namely its identity and its list of roles, everything is here present in the JSON Web Token and this information has been signed by the authentication server. This means that the receiving application server, in order to know which roles does the current user have, it only needs to inspect the token itself. So again, the application server can remain completely stateless. It does not have to have the information about the roles of a given user and it does not have to query a separate server in order to obtain that information. Everything is present in the JSON Web Token and it's signed by the issuing server that created the token. With this in place, our application server will have all the necessary information to really confirm that the user that is doing this request indeed can perform this action. It does have the admin role. Now that we have the list of roles of each user in the JSON Web Token, and we have the JSON Web Token already being forwarded automatically to the backend by our authentication solution, Let's then switch to the backend and see how we are going to use the role information of each user to block or allow access to certain backend services, such as, for example, the login as user service that we are about to implement.